WCNC TV Charlotte. This is Flashpoint, where power and politics collide and the tough questions get asked and answered. Happy Sunday morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us here on Flashpoint. I'm Ben Thompson. Joining me today, State, Repre State Representative Wesley Harris and former State Representative Charles Jeter. Thank you both for joining us. We appreciate it. Good to be here. First up, let's talk about the budget. After the longest legislative session in almost two decades, lawmakers left Raleigh without a new budget. You may remember Governor Cooper vetoed a $24 billion spending plan back in June. A debate over tax cuts, Medicaid expansion, the size of teacher raises has dragged on over the last four months now with Democrats and Republicans not coming to an agreement. Republicans in the House were able to override the veto during what was a controversial September floor session. You've probably heard about it at this point. However, Senate Republicans have not been able to get the numbers to work in their favor for an override, so they never technically tried. State Senator Jeff Jackson standing up on the floor calling for a vote in a video that has now gone viral. You need to call the vote. The entire state is waiting. They have been waiting for months. All 50 of us are here. There are only 50 members of this body. As I look around, I count 50. It's been on the calendar the last three days. We've canceled it the last three days for one reason, not because people are absent, but because people are present. Don't you see that's an integrity issue? That's not just politics. The fair vote is the one with everybody present. You're As the person who, who's still in there <laughs> fighting the fight, Explain to folks at home how something, I don't want to break this down on Republican Democrat lines yet, but just how does something technically happen like this? So what, basically what happened is we passed, well, the uh, Senate and the House passed a conference report for the budget at the very end of June, and Governor Cooper vetoed it at the very beginning of July. And so based on what our rules are, in order to override that veto, which is what the Republicans' goal was, you have to bring it back to both chambers, mm -hmm. and you have to have a three-fifths uh, major three-fifths supermajority to overturn it. And so, what happened is they put the veto override on the House floor, uh, on the House calendar, on I think July 7th, and they just didn't call the vote. And so it was just scheduled as unfinished business. And so it just, when it's unfinished business, it just rolls over to the next day on the calendar. And what would happen was they did not have the votes to overturn the veto. And so we all had to show up every single day. And when they saw there were not enough people to overturn the veto, they just didn't get to it, finished our business, adjourned for the day, came back the next day, it was back on the calendar. And so that proceeded in the House for over two months. Jeff was upset because they were doing yeah. it for three days. We did that for over 60 days in yeah. the House of everybody having to show up. Um, and so it was extremely frustrating. And at the end of the day, they ended up having to rely on deception to get it through the House, which is what happened on September 11th. And it took a while for them to actually even put it on the calendar in the Senate because they knew they didn't have the votes. And, but the Senate wanted to get out of town uh, at the end of October, so they finally put it on the calendar. And as, as we saw, they still have yet to call the votes because they yet to call the vote because they do not have the vote. And no negotiations are really going on behind there because they're going all in on the veto override strategy instead of coming together for a compromised budget. Yeah, I respect, respectfully disagree with my good friend, um, Representative Harris. A, this is not new process in North Carolina. The, the idea that a veto override sits on the calendar is not new to this, to this yeah. General Assembly or even to this party. Secondarily, I, I, I still, I mean, I, we're going to agree to disagree. I know you were on the floor that day. Um, I, I got a lot of friends in that chamber, and I, don't, I think it was a misunderstanding. I don't believe it was malfeasance on the part of the um, Speaker Moore. I think he, when the chamber saw he had the votes, he didn't believe that there had been a promise that there was no, going to be a no-vote session that day. I understand there's a difference. I concede yeah. that. I don't think it was intentional. I will say this. One of the things that we overlook is, and this is why I think you've got to watch state government all the time, because the reason we're here is because of a law passed about three years ago that no one remembered at the time. It used to be in North Carolina, we, we would have a shutdown like the federal government does. Everybody hates shutdowns, but you know what shutdowns make us do? Compromise. Sure. Without a shutdown, you find yourself in this limbo situation. And up until three years ago in North Carolina, there was shutdowns. We eliminated that in one of those December sessions, that one of those bills that nobody really talked about. And here we are today where I think there's a greater than 50% chance as we sit here today that we will pass no new state budget for this fiscal year. So explain to me, back to the first point you made, how you felt like in the House there might have just been a miscommunication, not malfeasance. What would you say to, to skeptics who say, okay, fine, 
But then what's happening then in the Senate? If this is not part of a coordinated plan, then well, what is it? Well, A, a I'd say politics is, politics is an ugly business on both sides. If people think Republicans hold the um, monopoly on ugly <laughs> politics, then they need to start paying yes. attention. So yes. I'm not arguing that this is something that you would want to teach your children to do. Okay. I concede that point. But both parties equally sure. do that. So the difference is, you've got to remember, the House has a set of rules and the Senate has a set of rules. Those rules are not the same. No. So the House followed its rules to a T, rules that were adopted by that chamber. The Senate is following their rules to a T, rules adopted those chamber. I think, and I think Representative Harris might agree with me on this point, we're all surprised that the Senate couldn't get that one vote. I think we yeah. really thought that once it got through the House, however it did it, that getting to the Senate was by far the easier path. And I'll be candid, I'm really shocked that they haven't got Don Davis or Toby Fitch or Ben Clark. You knew they weren't going to get Floyd McKissick. I don't care what anybody right. says. But I'm real surprised they haven't got one of those three to override the veto. Because in the Senate, it's only one Democrat that has to switch. Well, the reason why they didn't was because of the process that they used. The way in which they stooped to get the veto through the House, that, that cemented the entire Democratic Party in the Senate. And if anyone was about to flop, they, they weren't. Because you, you have to look at this budget and look at the political landscape of what our state was. Over a majority of North Carolinians voted for a House Democratic member and voted for a Senate Democratic member. Yeah. And so the Republicans know that over half of the state did not vote for their leadership in the General Assembly. And yet they stoop to these levels to get their budget passed. Yeah, and it's well, just, it's, we're not a parliamentary system, and the reality is, and this is one of the problems with this gerrymandering argument. Uh, there's Democrats across the state who think gerrymandering, partisan gerrymandering, is a panacea to all their ills. The reality is we self-segregate based on ideas. Yeah. You're going to win overwhelming numbers in some of these Democrat districts in urban areas, and Republicans are going to win closer races in the rural areas, sure. and if you go to popular vote, yeah, it looks like y'all won more, but we don't elect that way in this state nor in this country. And so the other thing we've got to understand is, you can say, and I understand the position, that the Republicans haven't come to the table. Can you honestly sit here and tell the viewers, as we sit here on Sunday morning, that the Democrats and Governor Cooper haven't threatened those senators that if they override the veto, they won't get a primary? And I think, I know I'm not going to make you answer that question because I think we both know the answer. But the reality is. No is the answer. Well, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, um, the reality is there's dirty tricks on both sides. And, we're, and what frustrates me is we passed many budgets for DOT. We passed many, many uh, budgets for health and human services. We passed all these many budgets for everyone except one classification in North Carolina, and that's our teachers. Our teachers and members of the Teachers and State Employee Retirement System, what we call teachers in North Carolina, which includes university, community college, non-certified, certified staff in education, they're the ones that are being held hostage for this budget Medicaid debate. Okay, okay before we go to break, how does this end? It doesn't. Yeah, uh, they've, they've shown no sign of coming to the table and having a, con like, on, as soon as we, as Does soon as Governor Cooper vetoed the budget. Date? No, it could, the, under the new law. January 1st, 2021. Yeah, when the, when the new Republicans get elected and sworn in. Um, <laughs> no, it, the reality is, under the new law they changed three years ago, you stay with the, bur the there is no there is no termination termination on the current budget that was enacted. So the 1819 fiscal year budget will stay in place in perpetuity in North it's, Carolina until they pass something else. And so, it, whether or not it's the budget, whether or not it's Governor Cooper so holding up for Medicaid, next year's budget. Same process. We're here this time next year with no new budget. This is no way to do business, guys. It's not. I it's agree. it's it's it's, agree it's, it's, it's completely Democrats ridiculous. Democrats getting power. You know what they're going to do? The Republicans. Same thing. Gosh. Yeah. I I I don't, I don't know. I, I disagree. It's it's to the point where everyone's banking on 2020. Uh, we saw the elections in we saw the elections in 2018, and they said, okay, let's we're we're going to keep doing business as usual. We may not have a supermajority. We're going to govern as if we have a supermajority, and everyone's banking on getting um, on 2020 bailing them out. I agree with that. All right, more Flashpoint after this.